Right kids, away to your bed, you wee shites, cause Uncle Gumpy's coming on. Beat it up this dear. Okay, I forced you to listen to it. I told you last time. I told you. I bet none of you went and listened to it, did you? So anyways, now you listened. So, uh, <laughs> this here is a, uh, a, uh, a tag. I was tagged by Sleeper Reader 666 Damien. Love that guy, man. Love that guy. Um. That dude's spot on. Every time he reads something he likes, I read it. I love it. So, uh, except for this this new book, uh, and I mentioned in my last video, I hope if he's seen that, he wasn't offended that, that I didn't agree with him on that or it came off harsh. But I adore that guy, so. Damien, love you, man. And actually, another guy I love is actually the one that started this. There, there's so many people in this community I love, and I know there's a big fight going on, man. I'm lucky. I kind of stay out of it. Nobody kind of bothers me. Maybe it's maybe they pity me and it ain't worth the time. I don't know. Or I'm just don't give a fuck enough that I notice. Or I'm drunk, one of the two. Actually, I only drink on these videos, really. So uh, I work so fucking much, man. That's why I drink. You gotta, you gotta drink away the pain, the pain of life. So this is a tag called the Four Creators tag, and it's supposed to be artists and or writers or both, and this and that. Actually, have a lot of writers. I mean, I think it kind of crosses over for what I'm going to say. But uh, so we'll get into this really quickly. I, my, I don't have deep thoughts like these other people, man. Some of you guys can just describe this shit. I can just tell you my feelings as you know, but I can't go into yeah. People like Hollow Mouse. That motherfucker's awesome. He he <laughs> he knows the history, of everything, and, and he's just left the community, and and that sucks, man. Love me some Howler Mouse. So, Howler Man, you gotta come back, man. We need you. So, I don't care if that causes, if someone else that doesn't like him now doesn't like him, I don't give a shit about any of that. Don't put me in the fight, really. Seriously. I, uh, I love a lot of people here. I don't think there's anybody I don't like, so. And even if I did, I wouldn't fucking say it. But I don't. <laughs> there's stuff I don't like, man. I, I, I'm pretty fucking easy, so. Anyways, not to get into that fight. We're gonna get into the first tag, and, and, and I, I just did this earlier, and I got about 15 minutes in, and my computer fucking reset, so. I got pissed off, and, uh, now I gotta do it again, so maybe it'll be better this time. Um, this is an, a writer. So it is, I mean, I guess I start off a writer. And, uh, he doesn't get a lot of credit. Because I don't know what else he's done besides this, but this I discovered this comic at 12 years old. They made toys, and they put out the comic at the same fucking time. Sorry, I'm looking up there as my, I'm used to my camera being up there. It's now down here, so if I look up there, I'm not fucking retarded. No, not so much. That, actually, that was horrible. Sorry about that. 
Um, and that sounded bad. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm on vodka. So, anyways, this was a, a comic that came out coincided with. I remember the comic came out first, and it advertised the toys in the back of the comic. And we went fucking nut shit, fucking ballistically fucking, wow, what, whoa, where, we gotta go to the toy store. And this was G.I. Joe. And it, I was 12 years old. This came out in 1982. I was 12 years old, man. You gotta understand, I don't know if Larry Hama is the greatest fucking writer in the world, but at the time, nothing ruled the world but Star Wars. And before that, it was Kiss. But Kiss ruled, and then fucking Star Wars ruled. Well, that shit was hard to fucking topple. G.I. Joe came along, and that shit went down. And I think that went hand in hand with the G.I. Joe comic, man. If you were there, you remember. You remember when fucking G.I. Joe happened. It was like overnight. It was, I got a handful of Star Wars figures, and I fucking threw them down. <laughs> and now I had a G.I. Joe handful of fucking toys, man. And then the, the comic... And I thought the comic was brilliant. When I read them today, I think it's still great. It's not cheesy. You know, they made cartoons that were cheesy, but the G.I. Joe comic was amazing. You got Larry Hammer to think about that. And then they did stuff like uh, they brought in the October Guard, which that time, man, we were still in deep shits with Russia. Well, now they made, like, the Russian version of G.I. Joe, the October Guard. But I actually liked them, man. I was like, oh, they're fucking cool. You know, it's really cool that they had an adversary that was badass because... Cobra was badass, but they always got their ass handed to him at the end of the comic. October Guard was just cool, and they were always waiting for that big fight between October Guard and one. They ended up actually kind of teaming up against Cobra, but I always just waited for that big fight to see how bad October Guard would fuck up G.I. Joe, you know? And they only had a few characters. Well, here there's five. And, yeah, so, it's like, I mean, if they would have kept going, maybe they did later on. After, no, I'm not in the comic. I, I, I have all the way, I have the whole run of G.I. Joe, and I love dearly my G.I. Joe run. But I don't know if maybe later on the, the October Guard grew as a team, but I only know of like these five members. Maybe they're, maybe, I think I remember them grumped maybe seven or eight guys at some point. But, anyways, and then they fucking did this shit. Then they started having fucking commercials, animated commercials, where they fucking had pages from this comic animated on TV in in a commercial and that went straight into the toys showing that there's new toys and I was just like oh, oh my god so I don't know how much how Larry Hamma had to do with that but oh my god this, this shit this this comic I know it sounds like I'm going off on shit that doesn't really matter about the writer but no I mean he <laughs> You could have watched this commercial and been fucking enthralled and then went back to this stupid-ass comic. But the comic remained good. And it remained, I mean... Like I said, I read it now sometimes from time to time, and I think it it holds up. I was 12 then, but, you know... I'm, okay, maybe mentally I'm 12 now. But then you had shit like this, man. You had a whole fucking town taken over by Cobra. I think uh, Scarlet goes home. It finds out that her fucking town has been taken over by fucking cobras, and they're all acting like, you know, normal fucking... I can't remember what the name of the movie was, the fucking Stepford Wives. It's kind of like that kind of thing, but the, the whole town's like that. But Then you got shit like this, man. You have an issue where, you know, this you think fucking Snake Eyes is dead, man, and, and this was deep shit, man, back then. So, I mean, the plot just kept thickening and thickening, man. Then they brought in another fucking commercial. This was the next commercial, and it, was, it brought in Destro, the new character. And oh my god. I was like, Destro, holy shit, he's got a fucking silver head. And that was big shit. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, they had other silver head characters before then. But still, I didn't read them. And then, my fucking favorite character was Clutch. Still my favorite G.I. Joe guy. Then there was an issue, you know, the cover right there, he's falling out of a fucking airplane or helicopter. It turns to be a helicopter, I think. Oh my god, and you know what? That is fucking drawn by John Byrne, if I remember right. Doesn't show here, but hey, that's a John Byrne. I mean, that's fucking John Byrne if I've ever seen John Byrne. So, John Byrne drew my favorite fucking G.I. Joe guy. 
So I've seen this, and I'm going, oh my god, he's going to die. He didn't, of course, but... And then that went straight into... Yeah, that was number 20. That went straight into 21, the silent issue. How many writers can pull off a fucking a silent issue and still make it cool? Because he wrote it. The guy just drew it. So, you know, he told him what to plot. It was fucking good shit, man, so... Yeah, people can laugh. G.I. Joe, really, man? Yeah, well... Basic, but sometimes you go back to the basics, and that's what's good, you know? It doesn't have to be fucking subplotted, blah, 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 but we're about to be subplotted here, so don't listen to me. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> now we get into Burn, speaking of, and I went to my cousin's house, and he had these. He had some fucking X-Men comics, and he had this one in particular. And I was just blown away with that guy right there in the corner, the white and red guy. At the time, he was named Vindicator. And I was just like, fuck, who's this guy, man? And, uh... And then he had another issue, and I actually don't know why I didn't pull that one. But the other issue was the one where he... One oh, oh, it was earlier. He had 109 and 121. 109 was where... Maybe he was... Weapon X, or Weapon Alpha here, but... In 109, he comes back to retrieve Wolverine. And bring him back to Canada. And X-Men fought him off so that, that he couldn't take Wolverine. So I've seen this guy named Vindicator. I'm like, he's fucking badass, man. Well, then he comes back here. Return to fight. Well, he brings his team with him. Alpha Flight. And I was just blown away. Canadian super team. Never heard of another country at that point, I don't think. And, you know, they're our neighbors. And now i got a lot of Canadian friends, so. But I just, I fucking love that, man. And I think... Vindicator, Weapon Alpha, Guardian. He's why I like uh, um, Captain Canuck so much. I mean, it's it's that same thing. But so then I started buying fucking X Men comics, man. And then this, this is fucking iconic. So you got John Byrne, was just a fucking god as far as artists go. And to me, a lot of these people in this community love uh, love uh, Jack Kirby. I like him. But, you, I mean, you guys are gaga over and i got to remember to look down there. Look down there. Look down there. So, uh, but I'm not gaga over Jack Kirby. I, I do agree that his backgrounds are amazing. But when I get to to his art, I think it's squared off and his fingertips are square and this and that. And Howler Mouse, once again, love you, brother. He had talked about John Byrne's style being like Jack Kirby. You can tell he's a fan, but... Where Jack Kirby worked in squares, John Byrne worked in circles. So, and that's that's what I liked, man. I liked the, uh, yeah, the circle. And John Byrne does draw a lot of faces. It seems like from comic to comic, there's a lot of people that look like this guy looks like this guy from the last comic. So he does draw a lot of the same faces. But I still think this fucking art is amazing. And once again, it goes back to he started plotting after this. This was, uh, Claremont, Chris Claremont, which I... So we'll go into a, a, a writer I like, Chris Claremont, and he did X-Men for, what, like 20 years? And it's... it's, I mean, there's not many people who can say they have done more for comics than Chris, Chris Claremont, man. Even Jack Kirby didn't do as much for comics than Chris Claremont. I mean, argue with me if you'd like, but good lord, the guy. 20 years on one fucking comic, man. And uh, some of the... Some, biggest fucking plots and here's the thing about oh shit yeah 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 that's right okay we'll get into that in a second okay so after that John Byrne moved on to his uh his Outflight fucking book and I worshipped this as a kid I remember him going to this and this was 83 83 oh, I remember picking this up on the newsstand and yeah the kid, the kid couldn't be happy I could have got a new bike and wouldn't have been as happy so, yeah. But then I also had problems finding number two. So I, I jumped from this to number three. So, and that really sucked for me. But So now I actually own three copies of number two just to make up for it. And then that fucking comic moved on to Alpha Flight number 12. And they actually killed my favorite character, Guardian, Vindicator, Weapon Alpha. And that blew my mind. I'm a 13-year-old kid. You can't kill my favorite character. 
So it was like, how do you move on after that? And I actually think I lost interest. I, I kept buying Alpha Flight, but I kind of lost interest because, man, they fucking killed my guy, man. So John Byrne was... And, and once again, going back to Howl Mouse, he talked about how John Byrne would, would put little subplots in his comics right now and bring them into fruition a year later or even in another comic. So... He put in these little th these little seeds to show, and it was amazing. I mean, it just shows you what a great artist John Byrne is. But I and he's not highly regarded as a great writer for some reason. And I think he's amazing. I, I love John Byrne's writing and art, man. So that's my top dog on both. And uh, see, then he went to he moved to Fantastic Four, and this shit's good. If you guys haven't picked up any John Byrne stuff, man, you're missing out. His characters do look a lot the same. He, I mean, when he draws regular people, they look just like their last regular person. But, yeah, there's, there's no pages. That, I mean, there's pages that stand out, but just such good stuff, man. I don't know. It's not enough I, good I can say about uh, John Byrne, but I know Sleepy. No, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sleepy Reader. Keep bringing your name up, Damien. I love you, brother. Um, read him Stevens. That's it. That's who fucking started this tag. Read him Stevens. So. He's now getting some John Byrne stuff. So I hope he's discovered these Fantastic Four comics. I mean, seriously, wonderful stuff, man. Like I said, the plots, the subplots, good stuff. So, and that went into, you know, like, who is he? Who is he? What is he? You know, he just, he just did these covers where... Now they, Marvel fucking doesn't do this shit. Nobody does these shit. These fucking, the question on the cover where you gotta pick up that comic and fucking read it, man. Nobody does that, but John Byrne was pretty much a master of that kind of shit. He always raised questions around the cover, man. There's probably better people at that, but I don't care, man. I love me some fucking John Byrne, and you can't convince me otherwise that, I know there's some fucking John Byrne haters out there. And, well, that's fine. Um... Yeah, this is just a random issue I pulled. These were like in order, but go pick up some fucking John Byrne Alpha Flight, some John Byrne X-Men, some John Byrne Fantastic Four. Move into the John Byrne Superman. Uh, God, this John Byrne fucking uh, She-Hulk. I mean, he was writing and drawing most of those things, if I remember. And, jeez. And then, my twin brother. Here, let's, let's have a shot to my twin brother. Which looks nothing like me. Oh, I have no chaser. We're going to do this chaserless. Blah. Okay. Mm. So anyways, <laughs> 20 minutes? I can't even do a video under fucking 20 minutes. Okay, anyway, so so later on, my, my twin brother, he started getting into fucking underground comics. Well, I'm still getting DC and Marvel shit, ma mainly Marvel stuff. And I'm making fun of him because he's buying these fucking weird-ass comics. And then I see this comic he's got called Yummy Fur. And I'm laughing. I'm like, that fucking art is horrible. Good. Why would uh, literally? It looks like me and my twin brother used to draw comics when we were kids, and we drew probably a hundred comics. We actually stapled them together, put them in a fucking comic book bag, and we still got a, a lot of those. And you know they were really generic. They're drawn on lined paper. Just 
my twin brother became an actual artist. He went to Heron Art School in Indianapolis, and I could scribble all right. But so I'm looking at the shit, going, "Shit, this is worse than what we do, brother." You know, so. I used to smoke a little bit of weed back in the day, I'm just going to say. And I remember getting really high and thinking, I'm going to go read those fucked up comics my brother's got. So I go in there, and I get all his yummy fur comics. Boom! So, there's yummy fur number one. And the girl on the cover saying, Darling, why are you hiding your gerbils from me? So, <laughs> this comic, man... The guy who writes this also draws it, and it is some fucked up shit, and I honestly, this is not the greatest writing or the fucking greatest art, but it has inspired me, man. It's, this, this is art. This is not art, but art as in fine art. This is art. This is this guy <laughs> you can have a Picasso on the wall and then you can have John Lennon's scribbles on next to it and I think the John Lennon scribble of his little face to the side not just because it's John Lennon but I the scribble to the side says more than the fucking Picasso does if you if you're catching what I'm saying yummy fur is fucking amazing Pick up, please pick up some of these if you ever, ever see them. And I guarantee you don't. You're not going to see these in a 50 cent box. If you do, fucking snag them. You will thank me. You will fucking send me a message and say, Gimpy, god damn it, thank you for... I went 32, 33 issues. But uh, a lot of this is self-biographical, autobiographical, whatever the word is for... Um... Yeah, the first few issues are stories he made up, but then he starts going into <laughs> this stuff. And it's, his name is, oh shit, I didn't even say his name. It's uh, Chester Brown. Chester Brown writes and illustrates these. And the fucking art is really generic. But the more you read it, it's actually pretty fucking brilliant. I mean, shit, here, he edited it. Edit, edit. Every issue is split in half. You got a comic about his life, and then you got stuff that goes into like he does this religious stuff. And he's not religious, but he's like torn on religion. So he goes into these religious stories where he almost challenges. I don't know. You have to read them. It's it's like the harsher side of a religious story. He. I mean, look at the faces. It's not the best art in the world, but. And that's just a guy going, I mean, literally, this guy, it's just his face going off for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages. Seven pages of this guy's face just talking, and he's yelling, but it, it's not anti-religion, but uh, it's religious figures. I don't even know who that is. I could go back to the beginning and tell you who that is. It's, so it, it, it was, oh, it's Matthew. Matthew, well, that's the scripture. Matthew, Matthew 5, 11 to 7, 22, whatever that means. And it's him questioning his religion, what it is. But, I mean, look at his, uh, okay, this is, uh, this is Chester Brown's recounting of him as a, a young guy entering his masturbation stage. And he's talking about he found some fucking Playboy magazines. Somehow, I can't remember how he found them. This isn't the issue that he found them. But what he did, so he didn't want to get caught, he had a field across the street. And he took him across the street and found this board laying in, this, in a field. And he put his magazines under that board and laid the board back down. And every day after school, he would come by, lift up that board, get a magazine out, and go masturbate. So he was he was hiding his oh yeah actually at first they were under his bed and uh, then he freaked out that he was going to get caught. So this is about his life, but you've got like little little angels and little demons whispering in his ear, telling the story. You know, just really 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 fucked up comic man. But if you read it, 
it reads really well. He, uh, and his art isn't bad, but I mean, it's by no mean, it's not John Byrne, it's very basic. I, I can show you this and it's not going to be a big deal, but <laughs> here's how he drew masturbation. He's, uh, just got it between his hand and he's just making friction. <laughs> so there he is in the process. I mean, this comic is so good, and he's actually thinking about. I mean, he talks about real playmate, playmates that the issue that he was using at the time. So he talks about the actual account of the magazine he used. Who was a playmate that? Please, 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 please pick up Yummy Fur. I promise you, I don't know if I did them a disservice or made you want to get these, but I, I promise you, you will thank me for having you uh, look at these. And So, there's so many artists I could talk about. Um, I mean, people I love now. So, um, I can't... What? What'd you say, Vodka? Oh, I know I love him too. He's saying... Uh, he's saying Bernie Wrightson. I love Bernie Wrightson too. So, yeah, I know. So, Vodka loves Bernie Wrightson. Yeah, you love who? Alex Ross. I love Alex Ross too. So, apparently, Vodka has its own, uh, let's say, shh, come on, dude, shh, quit screaming shit, man. Kids is sleeping. Kids is sleeping. So, we're gonna have another shot. I'm gonna put Vodka to bed. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Here we go.